Just to watch here how much fuel is going. Six seconds of fuel went in there. The car is away. It didn't leave immediately, did it? As soon as the lollipop was lifted, there's another couple of seconds, really, for Franco Cola Pinto to locate the first gear. And there is the 41 car. There's the gap. Yeah. It's going to be very, very close here, isn't it? Well, the and he was, I think he's retained the lead. Well, Colo Pinto should just about get the lead, but surely the better run out of the corner and up the hill will come from Louis Delatraz. And how about this for the final 26 and a bit minutes then to the finish between G-Drive Racing and Team WRT. We may have only a couple of cars on the lead lap, technically speaking. One or two others are bringing themselves back into the equation. The 32 car just tucked in behind is a long way down. So let's enjoy Franco Colo Pinto on... Well, they did stick fuel, they didn't uh, change tyres, no. so the tyres will still have a lot of temperature in them. Louis Delatraz, though, um, is properly in the rhythm and needs to perhaps now, I would suggest, to make sure he gets ahead of Colapinto and then, well, tries to hope to, to hold back the 17-year-old. But he needs to overtake him, and that's a big, big job. That was a great strategic call from David Leach and the G-Drive racing crew. They clearly knew what they needed to do, get that car back out in front, they just managed it. And uh, just that little stumble on the start just uh, will have robbed him of a little bit more of a potential edge. But now we get a grandstand finish for this race. We've got uh, traffic up ahead by way of the 37 car. That's just checked up Colapinto for a moment, didn't it? Rather, and uh, Louis Delatraz had a very long think about a move at Turn 10. That would have been brave because there's really only one racing line through Turn 10. It looks quite tight on the track map, but it's a very fast corner, in truth. Guess what the next car up the road is from this lot? Go on. 25. It's the other G-Drive car with, uh, is it Roberto Murray in fourth place? Yeah, yes. Uh, he's not going to be keen on being lapped, is he, really? It's a... Uh, Colapinto well, goes defensive. Do, do, do you get the feeling that maybe it'll be slightly easier for Cola Pinto to pass his teammate than it would be for Louis Delatraz? One would presume it wouldn't be more difficult. And the United car looking more quick than the two cars ahead of it. Of Jop van Aerten, remember. So Jop yep. should really be scrapping for the lead, uh, judging by his pace at the start of the weekend. Sadly, he's not down in 28th position. Uh, it, overall, as now Delatraz tries to get alongside, does get alongside the race leader Cola Pinto, who runs even deeper than normal into turn six and ensures that the Swiss cannot pull, cannot uh, turn in at the usual point. And that's rather delayed Louis Delatraz as a result. That's this is cracking stuff, isn't it? This is the new young gun and the emerging young gun, and this <laughs> these these two guys. I've got potentially big futures both in sports car racing and elsewhere, I should say as well. Car 83, by the way, the Iron Dames reported for crossing the white line at pit entry. That's likely to be a drive through as Colapinto looks for the quick way through past the graph car. It's not available. That's actually stumbled, giving him a stumble, Johnny Palmer. Yes, well, the graph car was possibly a bit naughty there, showing the inside line against the concrete wall and then closing the gap, and it was a car being lapped. So, uh, you know, blue flag should have been waving in the direction of the graph machine driven by Vincent Capillaire. Side by side again, heading up the hill towards turn three, but there's a slower LMP3 car that they'll be, me be mindful of as well. Cola Pinto got the tail out, so I don't think his exit out of turn three is going to be as good as Louis Delatraz, but he puts the car in a very sensible position well over to the right. 17 year old Argentinian driver Franco Cola Pinto up against 24 year old Swiss from Geneva, Louis Delatraz. This could rumble on for at least another 15, 20 odd minutes. Oh, I do hope so. Cracking stuff for both these drivers and racecraft uh, emerging here, which is great to see. Where do you put the car? How quickly can you put the car there? Where is he? Where do I want him to be? Yes, yes. And that's the thing is a, a man driving beyond his years in the form of Franco Cola Pinto because the racecraft sometimes in sports car racing takes a little, a few years to actually arrive. but. Uh, not a hint of that for young Franco. And he realised he didn't get quite as good an exit out of three as he wanted. That was partly because he was forced to be later on the brakes than he would have wished into turn three. And therefore it was about car placement for the next couple of corners. Uh, Cola Pinto to the right-hand side of car 55, which is the David Perel-driven spirit of race Ferrari. Running second in GTE. And they deposit the Ferrari well before turn one. So that hasn't driven at the gap between the top two and 
Tom Gamble still still away down the road a minute and 20 seconds so there's no big threat from behind for Louis Delatraz he can entirely focus on the Matric hand which is getting ahead of the G-Drive number 26 car well he could completely uh, 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 rely on that one because there's at least one penalty coming the way of the 22 car and possibly a post-race penalty as well which put, to my mind looks as if we've got um, Roberto Murray looking good for an overall podium position in the 25 car Roberto Murray by the way has moved ahead of the 37 car we've got ahead on the road here uh, that uh, is laps down the cool racing car Colapinto oh, that's almost an avoidance there wasn't yes. there for Louis Delatraz well he was almost using the, the draft from uh, Kwanee's car and it, then jinked to the left hand side it is indeed a drive through penalty for crossing the white line at pit entry for the 22 Colapinto dealing with traffic well at the moment but there's lots of it to come as a moment or two ago, the 32 car tried to get up the inside of the 21. Was there contact on the outside of that corner in turn nine? Yes, and it resulted in the Dragon Speed car of Ben Hanley out onto the curves, but then a, subsequently a spin for the 32 of Jot van Outert. Not been his race, has it? I was about to say, you ever get the feeling it's really not your day, and uh, the 32 uh, side of the garage at United Autosports will definitely be feeling that, and more bad luck for car 22, as Graham's just said, for the drive-through penalty. That'll take them out of the equation for a podium finish, because Roberto Mary was only three seconds away anyway from attempting an overtake on Tom, on Tom Gamble. It's going to take them way down the order, because there's a gaggle of cars within 10 seconds, so we'll, we'll report on that one as and when it happens. Well dealt with that uh, traffic there from Franco Colapinto. If anything, he's eked out more an advantage on Louis Delatraz, the yes. more experienced driver here. Um, remember, Louis Delatraz finished third overall at Le Mans last year in the Rebellion. Exactly. And uh, wasn't he an overall winner in the Virtual Le Mans last year? I think he uh, was. Yes, with Rebellion Williams Esport. Uh, good memory that so uh, still pretty new to two-seater sports car racing uh, race with rebellion in this in the 2019 to 20 edition of the world endurance championship and he's already a race winner in the european le mans series this season after wrt took uh, the victory at barcelona in the opening round well it's franco colapinto who stands between della Traz and the rest of the queue uh, the rest of the crew at wrt uh, uh, robert kubitza and yifei Ye, for making it two wins out of two as now there's another problem for car 32 at united order sports because their latest pit stop once again is under investigation 22 tom gamble the other united car now taking the drive through penalty which means that roberto murray moved through into third position an overall podium position is not on pace going to trouble this pair he's a minute and 22 seconds back patrick piglet moves through to fourth in the edex sport car <laughs> Logan Sargent, and that's well off the track by the, the race leader. Car. Race leader's gone wide at turn three. Franco Cola Pinto squeezing the 88 Ferrari. Now has Louis Delatraz carried enough speed between turns three and four to at least draw level with the 26. He's not going to get by because that's neat driving from Cola Pinto, almost guiding the 41 car towards the cool racing machine. Number 37, no, 17 rather from Edex Sport. But they're going to be side by side again coming through the kink at turn six. And WRT were on the outside line into six and seven. So once more, Cola Pinto, whose car looks very strong into that double lever there yeah. as they go underneath the shadow or through the shadows of the ball, uh, which is leaping in the air just at the top of that grass bank and very much enjoying this race as we all are. Tiny bit of panic, I thought, there from Cola Pinto in trying to defend after the mistake and potentially forcing the 83 car off track. Yes. So that's one to watch for here, but uh, yes. I hope we don't get an interruption to this. 18 minutes to go, this is corking stuff, and yet again, the European Le Mans series is delivering. Yes, Alessio Rivera was minding his own business in the 88A, of course, of Ferrari, but then had to take to the grass, which we don't like to see. And as you say, that was a, an overly defensive Franco Colapinto, making sure that Louis Delatraz could not get the forward momentum required. Again, it's a busy run into turn three on the very next lap. Windscreen wiper on the high setting for Colo Pinto, and now they are going to fully overlap. The 41 car surely Going. gets the lead this time around. Yep. He does, and Vincent Voss punches the air down at WRT. Round of applause just gently ripples from their part of the garage. 
And again, it was a very slight error from Franco Colapinto. He couldn't get back across the track in time to defend. And Louis Delatraz, I think, educated from the previous lap, thinking he's struggling on the brakes here, or maybe the tyres. I just need to be tight on the exit and I'll get it. It's turn three. It's the place where he struggled. Turn three, lap after lap. And he's gone defensive. That's clever driving for me from Delatraz. Yep. He deliberately went wide on the entry expecting a mistake from Colapinto and he was there ready to pounce at the crucial moment there's the joy Voss in the flat cap and beyond is Robert Kabika